Crop versus full frame or full frame versus crop sensor. When buying a camera or talking about lenses, it is very important to understand what that means. My name is Wolf Amri and as always, I'm going to explain the difference between sensor sizes so that everyone will understand the pros and cons. In our Facebook group, we often get questions like I own a crop sensor camera, is it worth upgrading to get a full frame camera? Or will this lens I want to buy fit my crop sensor camera? Let's start answering these. First of all, what does the word full in full frame mean? That's easily explained. Back in the days, people used film to take pictures, and the standard film size was 36 by 24 mm. Here is an old camera. Back then, you had to open the back to insert the film. And here you see the frame for the film being exactly that size, resulting in 36 mm wide negatives or positives. In digital age, a full frame means exactly that film size. 36 mm wide and 24 mm high. To understand the difference between the full frame sensor and the crop sensor, let me just show you this very basic representation of a camera that I tinkered for our YouTube photography course. The attached lens projects the scene onto this white rectangle inside. That has the size of a full frame sensor, so 36 by 24 mm. If I used this rectangle instead that has a smaller size, all it will do is show a smaller viewport of this projection. It will crop out a part of the bigger sized image. So the only difference of full frame versus crop sensor is that the latter is smaller and that means it crops out a center part of the full image. But in photography, that difference creates some advantages and disadvantages. Advantage number one, magnification. If you want to photograph something in a distance like wildlife, sports, or something that is very small, like macro, cropping a part of an image always means that you kind of zoom into the scene and get a bigger image. Considering both sensors have the same pixel counts. So comparing a 24 megapixel full frame sensor to 24 megapixel crop sensor. Some people would call that effective focal length, others angle of view, but the result is pretty similar. How big the magnification is depends on the size of the crop sensor. Not all have the same size and that's why manufacturers name the crop factor. Canon's crop sensor has a crop factor of 1.6 by, meaning if you use a 100 mm lens on a crop sensor, you would need 1.6 by the focal length on a full frame sensor, which means 160 mm. Nikon and Sony, for example, have a slightly bigger sensor, resulting in a crop factor of only 1.5 by. That really gets important in sports and wildlife photography, where you use long lenses. Enthusiasts often use a 600 mm zoom lens. To get the same magnification on a full frame, you would have to use 960 mm. And this is a range where lenses get really expensive. That brings us to advantage number two of the crop sensor, the price. A small pizza is cheaper than a large pizza, and logically a small sensor is cheaper than a bigger sensor. But it is not only the price for the camera that is cheaper, but also for the lenses that you buy. We have talked about lenses already, but we will talk a little more about dedicated crop sensor lenses in a few minutes. Advantage number three, the camera size. Quite logically, if the heart of a camera is much smaller, the housing for the heart can be smaller too, making crop sensor cameras smaller versus its full frame counterparts. But for people with big hands, that may not only be an advantage. Some prefer larger cameras, but we, for example, travel and hike a lot, so I prefer smaller cameras to bigger ones if they offer the same performance. 
advantage number four, a crop sensor has more depth of focus. That means when you're shooting, for example, macro, you get more sharpness from front to back than with a full frame sensor. Take a look at this example. One shot with a crop sensor, the other one with a full frame sensor. I'll explain why in a second, because that bigger depth of focus is also a disadvantage. Well, and here we are at the disadvantages of the crop sensor versus the full frame sensor. Disadvantage number one, loss of light. If you have a full frame sensor with 24 megapixels, every megapixel has a certain size. If you have a crop sensor with the same 24 megapixels, every single pixel will be smaller in size. And now think about a window. A smaller window logically lets less light into your room than a bigger window would. So a crop sensor camera with the same amount of megapixels as a full frame camera has more difficulties in bad lighting conditions, creating more noise, particularly at higher ISO. The difference will be around one to two stops of light so an image shot with a crop sensor at ISO 400 will have roughly the same image noise than an image shot on a full frame camera at ISO 1280 or even 1600. I will link to a great camera comparison tool on Deep Preview down in the description so that you can see for yourself. Disadvantage number two, loss of background blur or bokeh if you will. Actually, a full frame camera has the same amount of blur as a crop sensor camera because all you do is crop out a part of the frame. But if you, for example, photograph a portrait from the same position, first with a full frame sensor and then with a crop sensor, you will get a different composition because your subject will be much bigger in the frame. Remember advantage number one, magnification. So, in order to get the same image, you have to step back. And well, the distance between your model and the camera is one of five factors for background blur in the portrait. We will soon have a video available about the five factors of background blur, so stay tuned and subscribe. So, by stepping back, you will lose blur. Or in other words, get a bigger depth of focus. But how much blur do you really lose? You could even calculate that, but let's find a visual comparison. I have set up this focus target and some Christmas lights. And I photographed these with a full frame camera and then with a crop sensor camera. For the latter, I have to step back to get roughly the same composition. If we compare the image shot at f1.8, you clearly see that the full frame image shows much more background blur than the crop sensor image. If we, for example, compare this light in the middle, I would have to close the aperture of the full frame sensor camera by two thirds of a stop to get roughly the same background blur. So f2.2 on the full frame gives the same background blur as f1.8 on the crop sensor. This image was shot with a 50 mm lens. Now what if we used a 135 mm lens instead? Here is the full frame shot at f1.8 and now the crop sensor shot at f1.8. Again, the difference is pretty remarkable. To get about the same background blur, I would have to stop down the full frame sensor about a full stop this time. That would be, for example, f4 compared to f2.8. If that is really important to you, depends on what and how you'd like to photograph. Because if you look back at advantage number four, less blur, or in other words, a bigger depth of focus means more of your image will be sharp. So while the full frame sensor is great to blur the background, for example, for portraits, the crop sensor is better when you want more depth of focus, for example, in macro shots. As I said, you can calculate that for every distance to subject, subject size, focal length, and whatnot. But I thought I'd give you a quick and dirty visual comparison. If you are interested, let me give you a link to a cool depth of field simulator in the description. Disadvantage number three, less wide angle capabilities. Remember advantage number one, magnification. The crop sensor zooms into the image. 
Well, that's good if you want to magnify something. But what if you want to do the opposite? Imagine you want to photograph a landscape or the interior of a building and you want to capture as much of the scene into one frame as possible. Well, here the magnification obviously becomes a disadvantage. The good news is, nowadays you can get crop sensor lenses that are specifically designed to get the same feel of view that you would get in a full frame camera. But unfortunately, if you're planning to photograph the Milky Way, ultra wide angle prime lenses for crop sensors are hardly available at all. And that brings us to lenses. You already know that you have to multiply the focal length on a crop sensor with a so-called crop factor to get the same angle of view on both sensor sizes. Another thing to consider about lenses is that lenses suitable for full frame sensors can be used on crop sensor cameras too, but not vice versa. So if a lens is designed to be used on crop sensor cameras, you cannot use it on a full frame. The truth is, with some manufacturers you could, but you would get this kind of image with a big ugly black frame, because the lens is not made to cover the biggest sensor size. Crop sensor lenses in general are usually cheaper, smaller and lighter. But one thing you need to keep in mind when buying a new lens is, if you consider getting a full frame camera in the next few years, you should also consider to get lenses that fit both sensor sizes. So getting a lens that also covers the full frame sensor so that you don't have to buy new lenses after the change. One more note on purchase decisions. For best low light performance, you cannot really avoid full frame sensors. But if you have a certain budget, don't automatically fall for a full frame camera. You can often buy older full frame cameras that are equally priced in newer crop sensors. But sensor tech is improving really fast. So a newer crop sensor may be able to keep up with an older full frame sensor. So choose wisely and compare cameras, for example, with the D preview tool I already mentioned. So you see, you cannot say one is better than the other. It depends on your needs. A longer crop factor can be an advantage or a disadvantage. Same with the depth of focus. When I shoot time lapse of growing plants, for example, I cannot predict in which direction the plant will grow. But I have to set the focus before I start the time lapse. And I need it sharp, so I use cameras with smaller sensors to get a bigger depth. And this is professional use, so you cannot say full frame is more professional than crop. Same is valid for sports, so think about what you need, make an educated decision and then purchase your camera. See you in the next video.